Hey everyone, it's Mo. Welcome back to a Reading with Mo. I know it's been um, quite some time since I have, I have actually like sat down and recorded a booktube video. So I don't know, I feel a little bit rusty now, but I'm sure things will smooth out as I get used to this again. Um, I did take a little bit of a break from making videos, but I am now back and I'm really excited to be making more bookish content for you guys. I just needed a break for a lot of different reasons, but now I just feel like very motivated. I think that was just the main thing. I had just like lost a lot of my motivation for a while, but don't worry, I have it back now. Uh, I haven't been reading as much over the past couple of months. I mean, I know I'm still reading way more than the average person is reading per month, but for me, I'm reading a lot less than I have been before. And I think partially that's because I haven't really been in the mood or like the headspace to listen to audiobooks. Um, I've tried maybe like four or five different audiobooks and um, just for some reason or other <clears throat> I either couldn't get into them or I don't know if it was them or if it was me. I have a feeling it was more of a me thing than the audiobooks themselves. So what you guys can expect going forward hopefully fingers crossed is that I will be posting once a week um, for the foreseeable future. If you can see this lovely stack of books right here behind me. Um, those are all of the books that I did get to reading over the past couple of months and I definitely didn't want to skip over them and not let you guys know my thoughts and feelings on each of these books so hopefully next week I will be recording a wrap-up for everything that I read in April and May and um, I think combining them then those will be a lot of books to talk to you guys about. So uh, anyway, anyway back into kind of what this whole video is besides just being a back to booktube thing is I want to talk about my reading plans for next month. So there are quite a few books that I'm actually partially into and I think that's one of the things that I was doing a lot of over the past couple of months was starting books and then either not finishing them or taking a really long time because I would set them down for a long time. So I have quite a few that I've like and halfway or some partially way into that I plan on hopefully finishing next month. So let's talk about those first because those are going to be like my first priorities for what I get to in my reading in April. I have three physical books here behind me that I've started that I am at some point into. So the first one is The Final Revival of Opal and Nev by Donnie Walton, which um, hopefully I'll, well I have plans for sure to make a haul video soon for you guys, but this is one of the books that will be featured in it. Um, Simon & Schuster they sent me this really cool um, like book promo box which I will have to show you guys which came with um, an actual vinyl record and a few other little like um, I don't know what you would call them like memorabilia or something related to the book and it was just a really awesome cute surprise package. I never received anything like that before and it was really exciting to get that in the mail. But anyway this book just recently came out and this one is following I believe kind of like two different characters. So we're following Opal and she is a young black woman who is a punk artist and she's coming out of Detroit. I think this is in like the 70s and so it takes place around the 70s in um, New York City. I kind of started this one but I'm not really far into it. I'm only in chapter 3 and it's been a couple weeks so I don't know if maybe I should restart it at this point. I'm not sure exactly how much I remember from what I did read. And then if you guys keep up with Oprah's book club picks, um, every once in a while I do. Um, I had already owned the book that she actually had chosen. Well, she chose four books because they're all part of the same series for her most recent pick. And it's the um, the Gilead, I think is how you say it, um, series from Marilyn Robinson. And she did like a read-along thing on Instagram. And I kept up for the first like two weeks. And then after that, I kind of fell off. So I'm only on um, page 132. I'm like halfway into it. And there's four books all together in the series and I believe she's going to be doing a read-along for all of them. So if I do finish this book, um, maybe I'll pick up the next one in April. But I'm not, I, like I am enjoying this book. I feel like it has a lot of things to say. It's very much literary fiction if you're into that type of thing. And we're following this, um, I believe he was like a reverend or preacher and he's dying and he's writing, this whole book is basically his letter to his son. I feel like this is a hard book to just summarize in one sentence or two but it's very complex but simple also at the same time. I don't know, I'm terrible at explaining things. I don't even know why. Maybe I should just stop making videos <laughs> again. Okay so then the next, well the last one that I have a physical copy of is a nonfiction book. It's called The Big Payback, The History of the Business of Hip Hop. Unfortunately it has this, my copy has this very huge sticker on it that I attempted to try to remove 
but it's very much stuck on there. It was ripping the cover off, so it's gonna stay there for now. And I've barely started this one, uh, about 50 pages into it, and it's very interesting so far. I'm definitely learning a lot about the history of hip hop and not just like the people, but like the business side and like different producers and kind of just where it came from. It's very interesting and I'm really not wanting to rush through this book. I'm taking my time with it. I also have the audiobook of this as well, but I feel like I'll probably get more out of it by reading this one um, through the physical copy. So I'm gonna have to look at my phone for the other books that I'm currently reading. So uh, I have one book checked out from my library. It's an ebook called The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel, who you may have known from her other book, Station Eleven. I own that one and I really enjoyed it, and so this is another one by her. And I randomly just checked this out, I think like a week ago, from my library. I just wanted something it was like super late at night. I felt like reading, but I didn't want to turn my light back on. <laughs> it's a lazy first world problem. But um, this book I had on my radar for a long time, so I decided to check it out. And I'm about 50% into it so far. It's very interesting. Like it's enough to keep my attention, but I don't entirely know what the point of the book is. If I'm being totally honest, like we're following so many different characters, but in a way that still makes it interesting and easy enough to follow along. But we're kind of just seeing, um, we're going back and forth on this timeline. Where the book starts is very different from where I'm at right now, I would say, without like giving spoilers or anything. I didn't even really refresh myself with the synopsis of this book before going into it, and then once I started it, I decided I just kind of wanted to be surprised as I go along. It kind of starts off along the lines of following this brother and sister who live in, on Vancouver Island um, in their kid childhood growing up a bit. And it definitely bounces around a lot and then where it goes to is something very different like this whole like criminal enterprise thing and um, like I just said I don't want to give away any spoilers in case you're not too familiar with the story. It's very different I feel like from um, the whole story of Station Eleven like don't go into this expecting that but I think what is similar is the storytelling itself and the way that we are kind of um, exposed to the different characters that the story follows. I am listening to one audiobook right now. Um, it's from Audible. I don't currently have an Audible subscription, but um, I have some books that I have not listened to yet that I did have from when I did have an Audible subscription. So I'm listening to King of Scars by Lee Bardugo right now. So a spoiler for my next month's wrap up. There's going to be a lot of Lee Bardugo on there. I'm definitely on the booktube hype train because of the Shadow and Bone series coming out on Netflix. And uh, so I've read all of the books already before and now I'm on to King of Scars, which I haven't read before. And um, I don't have a physical copy of it. I actually did order that one and this one is a du duology, uh, King of Scars and Rule of Wolves. And so both of those should be here within a few days. And they're both audible but they're both exclusive to audible so I do have King of Scars I will be listening to but then I'll probably read Rule of Wolves since I don't have a current audible subscription. I can't really say too much about these books because at this point um, there's the Shadow and Bone trilogy and then the Six of Crows duology and now this is the King of Scars duology so I can't really say too much about this because it will spoil things from the previous two series but if you like the Grishaverse world um, like I do then it's probably a book that you'll enjoy. Um, so far I'm on chapter six of the audiobook and I'm liking it but I feel like um, I'm not liking it as much at this point yet as like the Six of Crows duology and um, even I feel like even the Shadow and Bone series I kind of liked better but I'm not for sure like I'm barely into the story so far so I need to kind of see where it goes and everything so after I finish that audiobook for next month um, I may restart my audible subscription we'll see just so I can get Rule of Wolves as an audiobook um, but if I don't read that, then I just got approved through the Libby app for How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House by Cherry Jones, which this book made the long list for the Women's Prize in Fiction, I think is the award. Yeah, it was the um, Women's Prize for Fiction for this year. It was one of the ones on the list that I haven't read yet that I was interested in picking up on the shortlist. So I do have the audiobook for this and it's not very long, so I should be able to get through this one really quick. Um, this one is the author's debut novel. I don't know too much about it. I just know that it is set in Barbados and it's following four different people who are each trying to escape a legacy of violence in this place that's been called the so-called paradise. Um, I have read Transcendent Kingdom and 
um, The Vanishing Half, which are both nominated on the list as well, so I have high hopes that this one will be good too. I also wanted to read um, Unsettled Ground by Claire Fuller, but I haven't been able to find either like an ebook copy from my library or an audiobook, so I'm gonna wait on that one. Maybe in a month or two I'll see about picking that one up. Then lastly, for the books that I'm trying to get to for next month, which this is probably ambitious enough with what I already put on there compared to how much I have been reading these past couple of months, but I think as I return to making more videos I will also have more motivation to uh, just read more in general again, hopefully. So as part of Asian American and Pacific Islander History Month, um, I will be taking part in the Asian Readathon hosted by with Cindy. I will leave a video down below. She has a lot of different like challenges and giveaways and book recommendations um, on her channel if you want to go and check those out. So I pulled um, four different options from my shelves so that I can have um, a lot of different options when I'm deciding what I'm going to read for next month. Um, I'll go through these and that first one is Ponty by Charlene Teo. Uh, this one takes place in Singapore in 2003. We're following two 16 year olds and their friendship and then somehow we're picking up 17 years later and seeing kind of the fallout of something that happened I guess. Then we have a short story collection, The Book of Tokyo by, um, well this is edited by a few different people and I believe these different stories are from a few different people. Um, it's a city in short fiction. I really enjoy reading short story collections and I feel like this will be something fun to dip in and out of throughout the month. Then we have a book. I've been meaning to get to this one for so long so I just need to already and that's The Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan because I've been holding off on watching the movie adaptation because I want to read the book first and this one is the Penguin Orange Classics edition and this book we're following four, I believe it was four Chinese women. Yes, and they're all recent immigrants to San Francisco in 1949. And then lastly, we have Princess Bari by Wang Sok Young. And I believe this one takes place in Korea. So yeah, in North Korea in the 1990s, we're following a young girl who she um, escapes famine and death and she seeks refuge in China before crossing oceans in the hold of a cargo ship to London. All of these books are books that I have had sitting on my shelves for far too long that I really want to get to that I feel I have high hopes that I will really love these books so hopefully that is true. So those are all the books that I'm planning on trying to get to in the month of May. Um, if I said April at any point in this video I'm sorry I hardly know what day or month it is. I barely know the year so I'm pretty sure I might have said April at some points in this video but these are definitely the ones that I'm trying to get to in the month of May. So anyways I just want to thank all of you guys for sticking around with me during my little hiatus from YouTube. Um, like I said it was a very nice break though and I feel very much refreshed and ready to go as far as creating more bookish content for you guys. Um, something that I also would want to do in the future which I'm just saying it now it might actually not happen anytime relatively soon is you guys know that well maybe you don't know but art is something that has a big love of I have a big love for art in my life and it's not something I spend a nearly enough time doing it's always something that I put on the back burner and is the first thing that um is least priority I guess even though I love doing it so much when I get busy or overwhelmed and in the future I want to create some type of art that I can share with you guys so either through my own website or maybe it's like a patreon type of system i don't know i have a lot of thinking to do and research about it still but it's just something that's been kind of in the back of my mind for like two years now and something i've always wanted to do originally even before i had a booktube channel i wanted to create an art channel and eventually like have like a patreon where i could make cool um, art postcards and stickers and prints and different types of things that i could send out every month but uh, when i think about all of the work to start that up and to gain those type of skills into because like I have to figure out shipping and packaging and how to actually make physical prints of things and work and edit things digitally. It's a lot of things that I have to uh, kind of learn and figure out as I go. So that is kind of what's been overwhelming and kept hold, held me. I let that hold me back from pursuing that, even though it's something I've wanted to do for a long time. So. Maybe, um, you know, I'm not guaranteeing anytime soon, but I hopefully, you know, maybe within the next year or so, it's something that I would like to do, or at least right now start working on the actual art itself, and then I can figure out all the other stuff later. And I go back and forth. I don't necessarily want it to be just book-related art, although I would like 
think that would be fun to make stuff that is book related but I would like to create all just all different types of stuff and really not have any type of limit on myself of what I could create and put on there so I don't know it just is something that is an idea that's developing in my brain I still have a lot a lot of um, thinking on to do and brainstorming but if that's something that you guys are interested in, I just want to let you guys know now so that um, if you do see me putting something like that out in the future, then you'll know it's something I've been working on for a long time. If you guys have any ideas of something in that realm that you would like to see or um, any advice for me, if that's something that you um, are interested in, I would definitely love to hear it in the comments down below. But I think I'll wrap that up for this video. Um, I'm really excited to see and talk with you guys again. Um, I think I have some comments that I probably need to go back and respond to that I haven't for the past like two months. So hopefully I'll be getting around to that soon. And that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.